Just how infectious is the coronavirus? Well, epidemiologists use something called the reproductive number, or r not to gauge how a disease spreads. This number describes how many additional people every infected person is likely to pass the virus to before they recover. The common seasonal flu, for example, has a reproductive number of about 1.3. This means that every person who gets the flu will likely pass it on to about one or two other people. Scientists are still working to establish exactly what the coronavirus's reproductive rate is, but estimates place it between two and three. Meaning, on average, the virus will pass on to two to three people. To get an idea of how huge a difference this is on a larger scale, let's do some math. First, let's assume we are only looking at the r naught. Let's also assume we are in a perfect lab setting where no social distancing, vaccines, or anything like that can slow the virus down. In this setting, with an r naught of 1.3 like the flu, one theoretical infected person could lead to about 17 total infections after six rounds of transmissions. But with an r naught of 2 to 3, one theoretical infected person could lead to about 100 to 1,000 total infections after just six rounds of transmission. Either way, that's a lot more than 17, and herein lies the potentially daunting scale of the coronavirus pandemic. that this coronavirus, COVID-19 disease, seems to be so contagious is that even though it's spread in a very similar manner to how the flu or influenza is spread, no one has any immunity to it whatsoever. Seasonal flus have to battle vaccinations, and a portion of the population that has already had that particular virus and developed natural immunity. Even with experts watching out for potential pandemics, Virus outbreaks still tend to catch the world off guard. It was probably circulating for quite some time in Wuhan, China, before anyone even realized it existed. Uh, and that's what happens with an emerging pathogen. Somebody has to put the pieces together uh, to know that it's even around. And by the time they do, the damage is often done. An outbreak of this size and scope is also unprecedented. We've had other coronaviruses, right? SARS and MERS as emerging pathogens that never spread like this. And then what happened here is it affected so many countries all at once, and the supply chain, especially because much of it originates in manufacturing plants in China, could not handle supplying the healthcare systems of all these different countries at once. Uh, and so what no one ever expected to really happen, happened. Healthcare systems are becoming overwhelmed simultaneously, and there is not enough equipment to go around. In just the past decade, our world has become far more interconnected than it was during the last major pandemic scare, SARS. SARS first emerged in 2003. Since then, air travel has more than doubled. And a lot of that growth occurred in Asia, more specifically, China. This meant that when the coronavirus emerged, it likely had a far easier time spreading around the world. New research also suggests that the virus has a unique structural feature that makes it far more effective at invading your cells than SARS ever was. The way this virus and many others invade your cells is through their proteins. Your cells have their own proteins on the outside that act like locks. When another protein comes along that can bind with a protein on your cell, your cell sort of opens its doors and lets whatever is attached to that protein in. This new study says that coronavirus's proteins can bind with your cells 10 times more effectively than SARS can. Once you become infected though, you might not immediately realize that you've contracted the virus. It sort of feels like this virus is really smart, right? Um, it sort of seems like it has just the right characteristics to propagate it really well. People tend to have milder symptoms for about a week, and they tend to get sicker in the second week, which gives them a lot of time to be not sick in bed, <laughs> and walking around, and interacting with people, and spreading the disease. COVID-19 has an incubation period of up to two weeks. This means that you can be carrying the disease and be contagious for days before you show symptoms. 
and some people never show symptoms at all. The flu, on the other hand, has a one to four day incubation period, and pre-symptomatic spreading is not considered to be a major source of transmission. Even SARS, with about a two to seven day incubation period, usually presents much sooner. When Utah Jazz player Rudy Gobert became the first NBA player to test positive for coronavirus, eight teams tested their players. Of the 13 additional players who tested positive, seven reported no symptoms. And remember that Diamond Princess cruise ship that became a floating coronavirus quarantine nightmare when passengers couldn't disembark but the virus kept spreading? Just over half of the 634 passengers who tested positive for COVID-19 reportedly didn't experience symptoms. In a preliminary study published in the journal Science that still needs to be peer-reviewed, a group of researchers from top universities including the Imperial College of London, Columbia, and UC Davis have tried to get a better macro view of this phenomenon. They found that 86% of infections before January 23rd, 2020 in China were undocumented, and that these undetected infections constitute a large portion of the total force of infection. Experts caution more research is needed though, because presymptomatic and asymptomatic spreaders tend to not drive transmissions with other viruses. These unknowns draw attention to another potential reason the virus has spread so rapidly. Testing issues. The United States stumbled on the first round of coronavirus test kits, leaving authorities unable to ramp up testing as the virus took hold. This led to an overall fuzzier picture on how the virus was spreading through the population. With ample testing, our response to the virus could be more surgical, better isolating those who are carrying the virus but don't know it, and getting people back to work faster who are healthy. All of this info just serves to show how crucial social distancing is. Yes, it's a blunt instrument, but it's one that can mitigate many of the likely reasons for the spread of COVID-19 as we continue working through this pandemic. And of course, first and foremost, make sure you follow the latest guidelines from the CDC on hand sanitizer, hand washing, and prevention of COVID-19. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, help us out by liking, subscribing, and dropping us a comment. And to stay updated on Cheddar's latest, hit the bell next to that subscribe button too.